we're going to talk about a few movies that I saw in the last couple of weeks. This is going to be a movie analysis to a certain degree, but not not totally. I finally went out and I rented 12 Years a Slave. And I have to say, it was a very good movie. It was done in a very professional and classy manner. And although they did not delve infinitely deeply into the brutality and the cruelty of slavery, it was done in a way that gave you a the imagination to infer and interpret all of the cruelty and brutality and evilness of slavery. And I can appreciate that but it can, because it was already difficult to watch this movie in the first place. But having to, looking at the movie, I, I can tell you right now, I don't, I, I don't plan on buying it and I don't plan on renting it a second time because it's very difficult. It's very difficult material to deal with, even for me, even for a realist and an adult male like myself. It's, it's hard for me to deal with that. I didn't get angry at the end of the movie like I did with Django. But I did have a renewed sense of black awareness. And that's the direction I'm going to go in rather than more so of a, a movie analysis. The one thing I want to say about this movie is that the acting was superb from Chiwetel Ejiofor to, you know, you know, Lupita uh, Nyong'o. Uh, obviously, she was brilliant. Uh, it was brilliantly done. Everybody, all the players in the in the in the movie were were great. That you could tell they actually dug in. And took this movie seriously. Nobody was just fudging and trying to get by like they do on a lot of these cheeky, cheaply made B and C quality movies. The one thing that I interpreted from this movie that was the most important issue or issues were the dynamics between the characters. So I'm going to start off with Solomon Winthrop. He was, I mean, those of you who haven't seen the movie, I know most of you probably have, so I'm just going to go ahead and get down to it. Solomon Winthrop was a free man who lived in the Northeast in New York. And by all accounts, he was successful and intelligent, and he had a beautiful family. He 
allowed himself to be bamboozled by two slick ass white dudes who not only got him drunk but also drugged him and that is where his nightmare started and he was kidnapped and sold into slavery and what I want to say about that is this nobody can fool you into doing anything especially somebody whether they're black or white or, or whatever nobody can fool you into doing anything if you're unfoolable which Sol Solomon Winthrop was not he was gullible and never once during that dinner with those two assholes did he formulate in his mind that something wasn't right here why are these guys being nice to me and why are they offering me money see I'm always suspicious of, of grinning white people. I always have been and I always will be. Because they're not grinning in the ice man's face because it's just the right thing to do. They're not grinning in my face because they're, they're nice people. They're grinning in my face because they're either trying to get, they either they want to see if I'm going to volunteer and divulge sensitive information about myself or they're going to try to find a way to get some information from me so they can try to get me prosecuted and, in, and entered into the criminal justice system. That's exactly how white people think. So I'm always suspicious of them. And they, this is not necessarily a, a, a just, about a, just about race, more so than it is about genetic annihilation. The more black people I eliminate from competition for the same resources I, as a white person I enjoy, the easier I can rest at night. So that was his first mistake. The best decisions that he ended up making was as a slave. It clear, cause, because clearly he was the smartest guy in the room. And the one, the one dynamic that I'm probably going to spend more time on. Actually, I'm going to get to that in a minute. What I don't want you to ignore is the dynamic between Michael Fassbender's character, Epps, and Epps' wife. Epps' wife, the white woman, is actually in the same role that white women are in today. I'm just with you, and, and, and I'm, I'm talking as a white man. Most white men are with white women for genetic procreation reasons only. This is why most white men, and they have been doing this over or since slavery, 
they've always had a black mistress. There's all, they've all always had a, a Hispanic mistress or an Asian mistress. Why? Because the white man really doesn't even want to be with a white woman. Because just like the things that we complain about white women about, which is a, a white women are fake. Uh, most white women are not very attractive. Most white women are boring. Most white women are lazy. Most white women are self-absorbed and, and entitled. And most white women are feminists. So the same reasons that you hear black men complaining about white women, white men have a longer list of complaints. And the only reason why they marry these bitches is because of procreation and passing along the genetic code. They're not going to marry the Asian chick. They're not going to marry that Hispanic chick. And they're not going to marry that black chick. And contrary to what you think, that there are droves of white men marrying Asian women, that's not the case. Yes, there's an increase of white males dating and marrying Asian women. That is true. But not at the same rate as white men marrying white women. If you don't believe me, instead of looking at TV, getting all your information and your cues from the ignorant box, go online like I do and look at the statistics. Just because there's a two or three percent increase in white males dating and marrying Asian women every year or more doesn't mean that all white men want Asian women. Because if you go back 30, 40, 50 years, it was the preference of most white men to have a black mistress. As told to you in, in the story of this movie. The white woman represents all this bullshit social standing and, you know, this is the woman that's the window dressing. But the woman I really want to be with is this black slave. Don't don't let that concept get past you. Don't let that concept get past you, brothers and sisters. Look at the dynamic as it really is. I've talked about this on videos past how Merv Griffin and Johnny Carson and all these big television white dudes on TV. They had these talk shows. All of them had black mistresses. That's not by accident. You think they just slipped and tripped up one day and fell into a black vagina? You think they just wandered into the black forest? Hell no. And yeah, they kicked them black women a little money on the side. But they didn't benefit from the situation like their, like their white wives did. Yeah, the white wife got all the money. But the black mistress got the dick. And, and their actual affection. You got to understand something. And this is this is not trying to be mean to a white woman. Most white women are not most American white women. They really it, it really it's a cultural issue. It's not a race issue. It's really a cult, race, cultural, racial, cultural issue. Because European white women act way better than than American white women. Uh, white women from New Zealand and other countries, they're a lot more feminine and they're a lot more female oriented than American white women. You can get a, 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 a woman from Australia that's attractive or more attractive than some of these American women and they and they will not act like these American women. American women are culturally uh indoctrinated with a bunch of feminist dumbass ideology that causes them 
to become obsolete in the eyes of a man once they start getting older which is the case here between these two characters the only reason why that white man is even dealing with that white woman is because he knows he can't marry a black slave and it'd be totally acceptable that's why I was very surprised when they show Alfre Woodard supposedly married to a white man, a white slave owner in the movie. I thought that was very peculiar because that almost never happened. And I don't know if that part of, of the story was fiction and something they, you know, a little wrench, little monkey wrench they wanted to throw in there to kind of, you know, add some interest to the story. But you know, I, I'll never know. But I was thinking that, that that was probably part of the situation. Because I can't remember any any historical data that would suggest that white men were marrying black slaves. Not in the South anyway. That might have happened up north, but that didn't happen down south. But it may have happened on in, on some rare occasions. I'm not I'm not totally ruling it out. I'm just saying it is it would be extremely rare, or it was extremely rare. But I definitely would not discount the dynamics of Lapita's character and, and Sarah Paulson's character. I would definitely re-examine that when, uh, uh, if if you've already seen the movie, I'd definitely say, you know, re-examine that dynamic and and let it stick in your head, let it marinate because that is still the case today. That's why white women love it when black women beat themselves up about their appearance when black women are less than attractive and and and, they, and follow these white women that's wh why you think i talk so much about the real households of atlanta the reason why i talk so much about the real households of atlanta is because they are the epitome of clown ass black women you got these black women who are using the same beauty uh techniques that white women use almost every one of those women on the real households of Atlanta got a gallon of makeup on. They got fake eyelashes. They got weaves. They got fake hair. These are the same tricks that white women use with 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 their appearance. Let me let me explain something to you. A woman who has to spend thousands of dollars on makeup, on, 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 on putting on gallons of foundation and sealers and primers, you know, some of the same stuff that you would use to paint a wall. When a woman and, and weaves and fake hair and, and fake eyelashes that don't even fit the whole eye, the whole uh, 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 diameter of the eye, they're just like right in the middle. So it looks ridiculous. Looks like a, like the hot, uh, fake eyelashes look on a little doll on a toy these women look ridiculous when a woman spends that kind of time and money on this outer appearance not only do they become a caricature of, of what they should be as a woman and, 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 it, and it also becomes cartoonish but it also tells the man a lot about what's on the inside, which is nothing. Nothing. See, women who spend an inordinate amount of time and, and, and spend a whole lot of money on, on the outside, they're hiding something on the inside. Okay? Because 50 years ago, women were indoctrinated and, and raised and 
as girls up than women to build the inside. The outside was fine, but the inside was more important. Baby, having class, having decency, not allowing your vagina to be a hotel. Knowing how to cook, knowing to be, be feminine, appreciate, be appreciative. Having the mindset that what must be good for me must be good for the, for the greater good of the community or the neighborhood. Now what we get is selfish, baby acting, immature females who have the emotional development and functioning of a 12 year old middle school girl. When they can't get their way, they stomp their feet and roll around on the ground and act a fool or they go and cheat on you and go sleep with somebody else. And, and their excuse, you were never home. You've been ignoring me. If you, you, if you as a man use the same excuses to cheat on her, she would want you to be lynched in the middle of town in front of everybody. You should be shot on sight. You have no excuse for cheating. She does. And for re and for ex and not reasons, but excuses that are equal to that of, of what a teacher hears in middle school from 12 and 13 year old kids. That's why these women spend so much time on the outer appearance. Because there's nothing in their heart and there's nothing in their brain. There's nothing there. Because they're not being raised and trained for the, and the intended purpose for what women were put on earth to do. Just like men are not being trained. The boys are not being trained for the intended purpose of what they were put on earth to do. And that's why you have all this conflict out here in our society where boys don't know how to be men and girls don't know how to be women because nobody in it no first of all nobody's in the home secondly the person that's usually in the home which is the female she's inadequate and she's in the same boat because she was raised by the inadequate inept female with no daddy and being that single motherhood as being exalted and appreciated instead of being demonized like it was when I was growing up there's no incentive and no inc accountability for these women going out here having all these kids with with men they were just smoking weed with or they were just drinking with so don't let this dynamic get past you the other thing that I wanted to concentrate on was the issue of the issue of Solomon Walcott being intelligent and making dumb the dumb the dumb white boys in the movie look stupid. I thought that was very interesting that they did that. That was very interesting to me. I thought I thought that was very interesting. And the reason why I thought it was interesting was because if a white man had a directed this movie, it would have been all about making black people look stupid. Which should should not have been the focus. And that and that is the 
that's one of the 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 brilliance one of the issues that I had with the movie and why it was so good is because they didn't make the slaves first of all if you really listen to the dialogue in the movie it was very uh, 19th century and it was uh, it wasn't Yaza's and and, and, and and we going to him and all this old kind of stuff. It wasn't that kind of movie. It wasn't a Huckleberry Finn, dumb nigga type movie. It actually had it. It, it, it was, the the slaves had so much humanity, which actually all the the, the characters brought brilliance and 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 a superb performance to to the movie but i think what really got me was how the slaves were able to have an identity and a voice in this movie which did add an entertainment factor to it now uh paul dano's character the one pictured here was a the typical totally ignorant dumb white man which can be correlated to today which can be relatable and applied to today's white male you got a lot of white males out here they're not very smart but the thing that they have working for them is they're white just like this guy here he was dumb as fuck. He was dumb as a sack of assholes. But he was white and he was he was tasked as the overseer of people who were smarter than he was. And that frustrated him and pissed him off. And he is the equivalent of all the little half inch pink penises that belong to all the little weak, lame little white dudes that sit on Yahoo News and post comments calling black people niggers and, and monkeys and oh you got nappy hair and all this kind of stuff. He he is definitely this in the same class with these people. Can you dig it? And so he gets angry. At. Solomon Winthrop. Because. In his mind. He's better than him. And how dare he disrespect him. Being that he's white. How dare you do that? How dare you make me look bad? How dare you talk to me like that? And even though he was extremely valuable and though he was even though he was extremely valuable to the slave master it still came down to skin color it still came down to i'm better than you because i'm white What I thought was interesting was how they did not shy away from the whole dynamic 
of presenting, which I thought was probably very difficult, presenting very strong subject matter very strong subject matter that really not only show brutality but also show the thought process behind the slave master's intentions as well as the mindset with the slaves. Just like if you remember the scene where the nice looking light skinned chick was laying next to Solomon Winthrop and she turns around to him as they lay there on, on the floor sleeping and she initiates sexual contact with him <clears throat> okay she initiates sexual contact not because not just because she might have been sexually aroused but because she wanted even though it may or may not have been true being that Solomon Winthrop was married and still felt an allegiance to his wife even though he got sold into slavery she wanted some level of humanity from him even though it was in the form of penile penetration. And as you saw after they were done, she started crying. Why? Because she had no humanity. Slavery had taken that away from her. And she wanted some level of human de de decency from Solomon Winters, even though it was in the form of sexual intercourse. Don't let that dynamic get by you. It's little scenes like that that really give you a sense of how well written this movie was and how well produced it was. Not only was it historically accurate with the costumes and the acting and the, and the dialogue, but it made the story palatable or palpable and it made it a little bit more entertaining than the subject matter lended, lent itself to be because obviously slavery is no joke it shouldn't be a joke and it shouldn't be funny to anybody not even white folks because even as much as white folks try to put on a, a front that they hate black folks and, and, and hate everything we stand for, a lot of these white folks, even in the South, are not supportive of this kind of behavior from their ancestors. Although some of them are too cowardly to say that in public. The one main dynamic that I really want to hammer home with this movie is the whole issue of religion that was presented in the movie by the the first slave master that Solomon Winthrop had as well as the second one Epps that Solomon Winthrop had who the guy he was sold to 
by the first slave master. And what, what I want to say about that is this. If you noticed, religion, religion was presented to the slaves for their own good. Oh, Solomon Northrop, I'm sorry. I said Winthrop, it's Northrop, I'm sorry. Solomon Winthrop. And the one thing that I, I wanted to say is, and the reason why I'm going to spend more time on this than, than some of these other issues, you got to understand the issue of religion and the role that it plays in America. I'm not saying you should totally ignore Catholicism and Christianity because living in the Western Hemisphere, you need to be aware of it, but not subscribe to it. And there were several scenes in the movie where both slave masters were reading to the slaves out of the so-called King James Version of the Holy Bible. And that did make me angry. Even though, obviously, this is a movie. But we know that's exactly what they did. The slave master would throw Christianity and Catholicism down the throats of their slaves but they would also nominate house niggas not necessarily house niggas that's in the house but male slaves and let them con the black slaves with Christianity on Sunday. And that's how the black church came to be. Because it was born out of the Christianity that was thrust upon them as slaves on the plantation. And I thought it was so funny, not he he ha ha funny. But it was, it was, I thought it was interesting that the same guy who's reading out the Bible talking, telling his slaves to, you know, be honest, don't steal, love one another and all this nonsense. And yet he's sitting up there using them for free labor. And not only is he using them for free labor, he's using them sexually. He's uh, 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 raping them uh, uh, in, a, in a nasty, vile, dehumanizing way, males and females. Now, what you won't ever see is you will never see them portray white males in the true, nasty, vile, dehumanizing fashion that they really were. Whereas slave owners were homosexual as well as heterosexual. And they also raped male slaves and they also raped uh, children and they also raped 
children that were their child, they, uh, biological children, the, the half breed kids that they had with their black slaves. They also raped them. So you have to understand something. Oh, you gonna sit up here and tell me that a a a, 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 a nasty, vile, ignorant, and selfish individual is gonna draw the line at with at with at morals and ethics? I don't think so. I don't think so. Because how did homosexuality get get passed into the black community? It had to be done through slavery. Because we weren't homosexual in Africa, were we? So I thought it was interesting how they shoved Christianity and Catholicism down the slaves' throats. And how they sat up here And push that agenda. I thought that was interesting. But as you can see, the role of religion played a huge role. in how they controlled the slaves. It played a huge role. And I, and I don't think we should look beyond it. We, we should not look beyond that, man. I think what's difficult with us as people is we love to discount everything instead of looking at things from a logical standpoint we we seem to enjoy being silly we seem to love being silly. We seem to love being silly and ridiculous. Religion was interjected and shoved down the throats of the slaves so that they will act docile and childlike and not want to rise up and slay their masters as they should have. That's how they. That's what they should have done. That's what they should have done. They should have felt like killing the master. They should have felt like Nat Turner felt. And the people who supported him. They should fit. They should have felt like that. There was no other reason. For them not to feel that way. There was no other reason. Why would it not be about that? Why would they not feel violent and and murderous toward their white slave master? Is is that beyond humanly plausible? Uh, is that about beyond human plausibility? I should hope not. I hope not. I certainly hope not. I would like to think that I am more intelligent than that. I would like to think so. Even if it's not true.
but I'm willing to say that it is true and I hope you are too but as you could as you relate the issue of religion to modern day to modern day black people are still acting docile and black people are still acting like they waiting for that great getting up morning when we all be free and we all float to heaven we all float up in the sky holding the hand of white Jesus and we float up to him. Black people are still practicing the same dumbass loser mentality that has plagued us for 400 years. America is a business, not a country. See, you got to understand that the role of Christianity, Christianity and the Catholicism has created that black codependence and that whole social services mentality that black people have. Black people have the mentality that they'll go out and spend all their money on dumb shit like video games and clothes and, and rims for cars but then go and beg the social service agencies for the things that they need like food, shelter, utilities being paid, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's where that whole beg and give me something social services mentality comes from. And just like I keep screaming in all these videos, if you're being codependent and you're dependent on somebody who doesn't look like you to butter your bread or more or less feed you, do not complain about not being fed properly. If I provide you a place to stay at my home, the best treatment you're going to get is the first day you're, you're in my home. After that, I'm going to start treating you like the guest that needs to leave. So you're not going to eat the same food I'm going to eat. You're not going to sleep in my nice queen size bed. You're going to sleep on the couch, one of the couches, or you're going to sleep on a sleeping bag on the floor. So right off the bat, you notice that there's a there's a there's a line of demarcation between how you're living and how I'm living. And that ought to teach you a lesson with most people. It doesn't. What it does is it conjures up feelings of resentment and hate toward the person who looks like you who's trying to help your ass. You would rather slap my hand and kick me in the ass and stab me in the back than look in the mirror and blame yourself for why you have to eat out of my hand in the first place. The role of religion and what was presented in this movie does not help black people move forward. What it does, it, it, it excuses bad behavior and it further extends our codependence and our dependency on the generosity and charity of whites, especially whites of the managerial class. And the question I have for you is how long are you going to sit here and play the role of the escape field hand who can't think for him or herself? I think the time has come for us to stop acting like that 
and stop having a social services mentality. You look at the you look at the United States. You look at the United States as a place where look. You look at the United States as a big social service agency that owes you something. You ought to be able to walk up and just get something. Whereas everybody else sees America like a big ass tit. A big ass tit that you, that they're going to suck on to get done what they need to get done. And once they get full and they figure out what they need to do, they get off the titty. Whereas you try to sit up there and suck to your, your, to, to, from, from, from birth to death. And then you wonder why the white man continues to keep kicking you in the ass every chance he gets. That's because you are dependent and codependent on his charity and generosity. And the question has to be how long is it, does it take for that generosity and that charity to run out. So if nothing else, you should have picked that up from 12 years a slave. The movie Single Moms Club. This movie didn't do that well at the box office. And some people wonder why it didn't. We celebrate single mom, single motherhood in America. Single moms, it's being a single mom is such a great fucking thing, right? Isn't that why? Isn't that how single motherhood is presented in America? As this great thing? It's okay to be a bastard mom? With no man in the house and no man taking care of these kids, you just a a, 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 a single mom getting child support. <laughs> well, as you can see, one of the reasons why this movie was a failure is because America does not accept this single mom phenomenon with open arms. They don't accept it. And they're show and then two, I think the one of the reasons why this movie didn't do that well is because their a single mom's ratchetness was thrown back in their faces. And that's one of the reasons why women didn't go out and see this movie. Because even though these women walk around here with their single mom badge on their on their chest, talking about I'm a single mom, help me out, feel sorry for me. These women still don't necessarily want that shit thrown back in their faces, and that's exactly what happened with this movie. They uh, Tyler Perry tried to, you know, throw ratchetness back in the faces of these single moms, and they didn't want to go to the movies and pay twelve dollars to see their ratchety bullshit. And that's a good thing because nobody else wanted to see it either. As you can see, uh, based on the box office tickets, nobody else wanted to see the goddamn movie either. Because much as single moms hate to admit, people are sick of single moms. People are sick of ratchety ass, nasty women who use their vaginas as, as a hotel for penises. People are sick of looking at that shit. They're sick of looking at it in their personal life, and you think they're going to go out and spend hard-earned money, $12, $13, $14, $15 $1 at some movie theaters to go see ratchety, nasty-ass whores who can't keep it together. No matter what color they are. People just didn't want to see it. They're probably going to make more money on DVD than they are at the box office. Because people don't have a problem with watching ratchety dumb shit in the privacy of their home. But they damn sure not going to pay $12, $13, $14, $15 $1 to go see that ghetto ratchety nasty shit at the theater. And walk out feeling like they need a shower. 
But that's one of the reasons why this movie was a failure, because people are not that stupid as as Tyler Perry thought people were. He thought he could slide this bullshit ass movie past people and it that didn't work. People actually did not want to see single moms bullshit on the silver screen. And they voted with their feet and they didn't show up. I'm going to do, I'm going to talk about a couple of things before I wrap this video up. I'm going to talk about a couple other movies, but I'm not going to analyze them. I'm just going to give you some subjective opinion. American Hustle. I don't know if any of you saw that with Bradley Cooper and uh, a couple other people. That, uh, oh, and uh, it, that movie was garbage. Okay, I'm just talking about this movie in general. Uh, American Hustle was just a long ass boring movie. I, I the acting was good, but the 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 movie sucked. Even though the act, I know that sounds that sounds very uh, abstract and and un unusual, but yeah, the acting was good. Amy Adams was pretty good. Everybody was good. Chris, uh, Christian Bates, uh, or whatever his name, uh, he, he was good. But the movie sucked. Maybe it was the story or whatever. I don't know. It, the movie sucked. And it was just an overhyped movie. The last one that I want to talk about is Dallas Buyers Club. This was an excellent movie. If you haven't seen Dallas Buyers Club, you really need to check it out. It's a good fucking movie. It really is. You got to check it out, man. It's it, it's superbly acted by everybody. This is another ensemble of actors who just kicked ass. I mean, Jennifer Garner, I'm not real big on her. I don't think she's a very good actress. I think she she if 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 you if you have to if you have to nominate an actor or actress in that movie that really didn't bring the thunder, it has to be Jennifer Garner. She was not that good in my opinion. Everybody else brought the pain. I mean, you know, Matthew McConaughey, I, as you already know, won the Oscar for the best actor, and Jared Leto won best supporting actor. They him and him and him and uh, Matthew McConaughey was they was they were on fire. The reason why I want to talk about that movie real quick is I also want to talk about the hypocrisy in modern medicine in America real quick. Um, as you can see, I, I didn't really know. I knew that the movie was going to be about Matthew McConaughey getting AIDS and all of that. What I didn't know is they were going to get deeply into treatment and all that kind of stuff. Because I, I have had in the past, I have had HIV and AIDS clients. And I, I can tell you, you know, it, it's a rough ride, especially for uh, clients who have full blown AIDS, as I did. I had a couple of clients that, who had straight up AIDS and they looked horrible, especially the females. And to have that kind of finality in their life and be at the cusp of death. And to be, you know, having to walk that journey by themselves, it, it's, 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 it's horrible. But I had to get rid of those clients because they were just taking up too much of my time. Okay. Plus, I wasn't totally comfortable about being around them even as a mental health professional. But Dallas Buyers Club, what I liked about the movie was that it dealt with alternative treatment that really worked. And I noticed how Big Pharma was cashing in on these people's 
horrible circumstances. And it was just about money. That's why I tell people that they need to do their research on HIV and AIDS. And stop believing that that the that the that the United States and Europe are not or aren't evil enough to come make up a, a disease just so they can create a pharmaceutical industry just to make the drugs and make the money off the drugs. See, for you not to believe that makes you ignorant. Because AIDS was was is, is a disease somebody made up in a laboratory. It wasn't a disease that existed in nature. And we know that. But yet they tell the lies that some monkey bit a black woman in Africa and that's how AIDS got passed around the, around the world. That's a fucking lie. And you know it's a lie. But I love the way they showed the hypocrisy of the medical community as well as the pharmaceutical community and how all they were doing was profiting off of unwitting and unknowing uneducated people who had HIV and AIDS. The point that I wanted to make with all of these movies is that if you don't decide to think for yourself and stop being dependent on someone else and understand how the how the real world the real world works you're going to be in the dark and sooner or later there's going to be an end to your genetic code when 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 it, when it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be that way but we as black people think it's somebody else's job to take care of us we in the black community believe it's okay to hate on each other it's okay to try to get something for free instead of knowing that or understanding that if you want anything you're going to have to pay for it if it's going to be of any quality once we wake up and, and start subscribing to America as a business and not a country and not a, not some big social service agency. We'll continue to be in the hole that we're in and we can't move forward. The sad thing about a lot of you guys who who always complain about me not posting or not uploading older videos fast enough first of all you're not trying to make any progress okay I, I don't believe I look I'm the one that made the videos so I know the subject matter better than you do and the only reason why a lot of people want to look at old videos is because the sting the stinging effect of the truth in those videos was not as apparent as they are in the new ones. The fact of the matter is, ladies and gentlemen, you can't escape the truth, no matter how I deliver it. And what you need to do and what I need to do is we need to mature man and woman up, cowboy up. And make progress because if you're in the same mindset and the next same socioeconomic situation at 40 that you were in at 25, what does that say about you as a man or a woman or a black man and a black woman in America? What does that say about you? Sounds like you don't want to make progress. You like staying in the same situation. You got people in this country. Who will sit here and work in the same job for 20 some years. How, 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 you, you can't do that anymore. Not, not only would I as an employer not allow you to do that. Because I think that shows me.
that shows me that you don't want to make any progress. So the best thing for me to do is find a way to fire you or lay you off because it, 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 it makes it makes me uh, it makes me angry when I meet black people who who say they've been in the same job for 20 some years. How could you sit there, especially an entry level job like working in a warehouse or something like that? How can you sit there and do low wage employment? Subject to racism in the workplace, and you you've done the same job for the last twenty some years. That says a lot about you as a person, and it says a lot about your maturity as an adult. Because it's obvious that you're not very mature. You're playing it safe, and you're trying to not take any risks. And that's why a lot of those types of people today are at home instead of at a job. You tune in to The Iceman Show. I'm your host, The Iceman. Go by AskTheIceman.com and check out new information that I have for those of you who subscribe to The Iceman Show. Go by AskTheIceman.com. You tune in to The Iceman Show. I'm your host, The Iceman. Holler at your boy.